Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. What am I think? What am I think? You are listening to Popeye News Links. This is the Admiral Tibet who I represent. And remember, the time is so serious. Contankerous and dangerous. This is Popeye News Links. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. Now, yesterday, we took a break from the news. So, today, we are going to be having a jam-packed video. In this first incident, Saturday night, March 9, about 7.30, a 35-year-old man from Ocharias in Sentan, he parked and securely locked up his white 2017 Toyota Probox motor car at Half Moon Bay in the Hellshire area of Portmore. This man, he went fishing offshore. Early Sunday morning, March 10, about some minutes to 5 o'clock, he returned from sea and discovered that his Toyota Probox was missing. Hoodlums teeth it. Just like that. Now, in this next incident, a 55-year-old caregiver, she's battling for life in hospital. She's popularly known as 16 and she's living in the First Avenue compound area of Central Village in the parish of St. Catherine. We are learning that early yesterday morning, Monday, March 11, about 12.30, 16, she was sitting on an old fridge at the front of her gate when two hoodlums walked up. We are told that one of the hoodlums is known as Mario. One of them pulled a gun, put it to 16's face and squeezed. 16, she fell to the ground and Mario and his crony, they ran away making good their escape. The police, they were called and they rushed with 16 to a nearby hospital where she was admitted in a serious condition. At the time of recording this video, I hadn't gotten any update on 16's condition but if anything change i'm gonna be updating this story the mayhem now in this next story i told you about an accident that took place in the saint paul's area of little london in the parish of westmoreland friday night that youngster on your screen his name is javian black he was 19 years old and he lived at station road in the little london area javian he was riding that 2023 cheetah special cg200 motorcycle with a 14 year old youngster named tyreek as the pillion on it it is being alleged that javian he had just rode out of his yard when police officers in a police jeep signaled him to stop we are told that javian he refused the police signal and rode away and the police chased him. The bike that Javian was riding, it crashed in the St. Paul's area. Now, persons are saying that it was the jeep that the police officers were in that hit the bike that Javian was riding, causing it to crash. Both Javian and Tyreek, they were thrown from the bike and they received serious injuries they were taken to the Savannah Lamar hospital where they were pronounced d-e-a-d we are told that investigators from indicom they were in the area saturday collecting evidence but apparently some of the residents they were not satisfied with the progress of the investigations they were also dissatisfied with how the media covered the report of the accident Late Sunday afternoon, about 6 o'clock, about 45 residents from the area, they blocked the road. They lit old tires and they used old appliances and cut down trees to block the road. We are told that the residents, they were spoken to by police officers on the scene and they were reassured that all will be done to thoroughly investigate this matter. Fire personnel were called in and they put out the fire. 
Some of the debris was cleared and the road was reduced to single lane traffic. We are also told that trees were cut down in the Old Hope area of Little London. That man on your screen. His name is Mr. Delroy Pringle. He was 58 years old and he lived at Little Bay in the same Little London area of Westmoreland. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Delroy or who Delroy is related to. On Friday, May 12, last year, I carried a story about that princess on your screen. Her name is Sash Marie Spence, but she was popularly known as Kaylee. Kaylee, she was 8 years old. She was a student at the Unity Primary School, but she lived at Maras District in the Fort Williams area of Westmoreland. Kaylee, she died at her godmother's house next door to where she lived on Thursday, May 11, last year. The police, they had reported that their investigations suggested that Kaylee, she went into the bathroom at her godmother's house where she had a slip and fall. They are saying that while Kaylee was falling, she held onto the face basin. The face basin dropped and broke and a piece of it caught Kaylee under her neck, causing a serious wound. Kaylee, she died as a result. Now, I am also finding out that family members of Kaylee, they don't believe that story and they are suspecting foul play. So, Kaylee is Mr. Delroy Pringle's granddaughter. Delroy Pringle is Kaylee mother's father. Are you following me? So, Delroy, he knew that there was a roadblock on the main road between Little London and Negril, but he was not expecting one to be on the Old Whoop Road. About minutes to 1 o'clock, early yesterday morning, Delroy, he was riding his Red CG200 Special Edition motorcycle along the Old Whoop Main Road when, on reaching a section of the road, he collided into a tree that was cut down by demonstrators. Delroy, he was thrown from the bike onto the roadway. He received serious head and bodily injuries. He died as a result. Sad indeed. This next incident, it took place in the vicinity of the Lagood Health Centre at Lagood District in the Green Island Police Area in the parish of Hanover. It took place yesterday afternoon, Monday, March 11, about some minutes to 4 o'clock. Our information is that a man, his name is Easton Augustus Williams. He was born on November 28, 1942, 81 years old, and he was a pensioner living on the Orange Bay Housing Scheme in the parish of Hanover. We are learning that Mr. Williams, he was riding his black and white Touch CG150 motorcycle when he ended up losing control of it. As a result, the bike crashed into a nearby bridge. Mr. Williams, he was thrown from the bike. As a result, he fell into a shallow river. Mr. Williams, he received serious head and bodily injuries and he ended up dying on the spot. His lifeless body was removed from the river by residents of the area. Sad indeed. Now, this next accident, it took place last month, but I'm just getting the details. Many persons from back in the day would know that man. He used to run taxi in Westmoreland and St. Elizabeth. His name is Steve Finley. He's about 55 years old and he was living in the New Market area of St. Elizabeth. On Sunday afternoon, February 17, about 3 o'clock, Steve, he was driving a 1995 Toyota Corolla motor car along the White House Main Road in the parish of Westmoreland. Steve was in the process of overtaking a line of traffic when he oversteered to the right and ended up losing control of the car. 
As a result, the car, it veered to the right of the road and exited the right road edge. It then collided into a concrete culvert and overturned. Now, if you look on your screen, there is a photo of what is left of that car. Steve, he was thrown from the car and he received serious injuries. Steve was rushed to the Black River Hospital, but he was later transferred to the Kingston Public Hospital where he succumbed to his injuries on Monday morning, February 26, about 8.30. Sad indeed. This next incident, it took place last night. Monday, March 11, about some minutes to 11 o'clock. It took place at the entrance of a restaurant and bar at Fish Lane in Montego Bay in the parish of St. James. We are told that a guy, his name is Jamil Williams, but he was popularly known as Shits. He was 35 years old and he was a mason living at Tank Road in the estuary area of St. James. We are told that Shits. He was at the front of the restaurant when an argument developed with him and one of two guys over one of them pushing a truck mirror. As a result, one of the guys pulled a knife and used it to inflict a wound to the left side of Shit's chest. The guy, he then ran away, making good his escape on foot in the area. Shit's, he was rushed to the Cornwall Regional Hospital where he was pronounced D-E-A-D. -E the mayhem. Now, in this next story, tell your friends and relatives living in or who are from the parish of Sentan to subscribe to this channel because we are going to start bringing you news from the parish of Sentan. Today, we are starting off with a sad news. This one took place at the Evergreen Cambio along Main Street in Ocherayos. In the parish of Sentan. It took place yesterday afternoon, Monday, March 11, about some minutes to 6 o'clock. We are learning that the Evergreen Cambio it is operated by a 49 year old man from India named Mr. Lalwani, a 51 year old security guard named Mr. Harold Bailey. He's employed to secure security services and he's from Mountain View in Kingston. Mr. Bailey, he provided security services at the Cambio. Late yesterday afternoon, Mr. Lalwani, Mr. Bailey and an employee, they were in the process of locking up the Cambio to go home when a white Toyota Probox motor car drove up and stopped. Two hoodlums jumped out of the car with guns in hands. They opened gunfire hitting both the security officer and Mr. Lalwani who fell to the ground. The hoodlums, they then proceeded to rob Mr. Lalwani of two bags containing a large sum of cash. They also robbed the security officer, Mr. Bailey, of his loaded Taros .38 revolver. The hoodlums, they then made good their escape in the said Toyota Pro Box. We are also told that when the shooting subsided, a nine-year-old boy named Rishan, he was in the vicinity. He was found suffering from a gunshot wound to his right upper arm. From all indication, the security officer, he died on the spot. Mr. Lalwani and nine-year-old Rishan, they were rushed to a nearby hospital where they were treated and admitted. We are told that when the police processed this crime scene, Eight 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. Now, in this next two stories, the Green Jill mayhem continues. And presently, there are two different conflicts taking place in the Green Jill area. One of the conflicts is as a result of the killing of that guy on your screen. His name is Garnet Stewart. And yes. <laughs> yeah man, I know that some of you, you are tired of hearing about Garnet, but for context, I have to do it. Garnet was popularly known as Gully or Demon. He was stabbed and shot to death by Tevin Chisholm 
also known as Iceberg at Fuller's Field in the Grangeville area on Saturday night, February 24. You might have heard a WhatsApp message that I read about Gully and how and why he was killed. You might have heard an interview I did with a female who claimed that she was sexually assaulted by Gully and his cronies. You might have heard a voice note I played that was sent in by one of Gully's friends. But one thing I knew for certain was that there was going to be reprisal or reprisals for Gully's killing. Because many persons have been telling me that right now, Iceberg, he's safer in jail more than outer road. Now, you remember the voice note I played where the person said this? Listen this. So you know, now when Gully go feel good, now Gully go to the kitchen, you know, then I'm going to tell her Gully to you. Know. She's going to talk about him, Gully, and then Gully and she's going to say, I'm going to go to the kitchen, and Gully and go to the kitchen. So I'm going to go to the kitchen, and Gully and go to the kitchen. So I'm going to go to the kitchen, and Gully and go to the kitchen, and Gully and go to ketchup so you heard that many of Gully's friends they are saying that other persons were involved in the killing of Gully. they are also saying that a silver 2013 toyota axio motor car and they know the last number they are saying that the persons who killed Gully, they left the scene in that car as a matter of fact they are saying that the owner of this Toyota Axio motor car, he was involved in Gully's killing. We are also told that after the killing of Gully, the owner for the Axio, he got words that persons were saying that his car was the one that carried away Gully's killers from the scene. As a result, the car was not seen in the Granger space for a while. That young man on your screen. His name is Shaquille Forrest. On October 7, last year, Shaquille, he celebrated his 21st birthday. Shaquille was gainfully employed as a customer service rep and he lived at Bay Road in the Little London area of Westmoreland. We are told that Shaquille, he is the only child for his mother but he is the 26th child for his mother father yes i said 26 now what we're learning is that shaquille's brother his name is Jaden. he is 22 years old not knowing that the toyota axio was hot he rented that car from its owner because he and his brother shaquille they wanted to go and visit their father at fuller's field district shaquille and Jaden. They went to visit their father and about some minutes to 10 o'clock. They were in the car being driven by Shaquille, a hoodlum who was seeking revenge for Gully. He might have seen the car earlier, but he did not know who was driving it. So he waited at a spot where he knew that the car would be passing. Or it is possible that phone call run. Jaden and Shaquille. They were in the Axio traveling from Geneva direction towards Fuller's Field. On reaching the Fuller's Field Square, a lone hoodlum stepped out into the road with a gun in his hand. He opened gunfire at the car. Shaquille, who was the driver, he ended up losing control of the car which ran across the road and stopped on the right embankment. Both brothers... They managed to run from the car, but the hoodlum, he chased Shaquille and continued firing shots at him, hitting him to his head and his upper body. The hoodlum, he then made good his escape on foot in the area. The police were called, but 
Only Shaquille was found in a drain on the right side of the road. He was rushed to the Savannah Lamar Hospital where he was pronounced D.E.A.D. We are told that residents of the area, they later found Jaden in bushes. He received a single gunshot wound to his abdomen. Jaden, he was rushed to hospital by residents where he was admitted in a serious condition. We are told that Jaden's lungs are punctured. Our information is that when the police processed this crime scene, 10 9mm spent shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Are these stories so interested? Are you so glued to your phone that up until now, <laughs> you're not touch the love button? Well, touch it now. Yeah, man, touch it now. And if you're over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, Hit on the subscribe button as also. Hit on the notification bell. Then click all. So that whenever we drop a new video, you will be one of the first to be notified. In the final story for today. Now, the other conflict taking place in Grangel is unrelated to the one I just told you about. Now, you remember that on Sunday, I told you about that guy on your screen. He's popularly known as Bad Bad and he was involved in an accident and what followed after? We are told that this killing is related to reprisals taking place surrounding that incident. That guy on your screen. His name is Norman Bakredan but he was popularly known as Shortman. On May 11 coming up. Shortman, he will be celebrating his 24th birthday. He lived at Belisle Road in the Grangel area. Now, I carried a story about Shortman on this channel one year ago. Early Tuesday morning, March 14, last year, the police they carried out a raid in the Belisle Road area of Grangel. The police had reported that Norman Bakredan, also known as Shortman, his house was searched and four lead sheets were found in the house. As a result, Shortman and a 27-year-old female named Sandria Stora, they were charged for lottery scamming offenses. The police, they also alleged at the time that during the search of Shortman's house, his 52-year-old mother, Juliet Reynolds, she was in the house and they said that her actions aroused their suspicion. As a result, Juliet, she was searched and under her left arm, the police found one burgundy and white socks. The socks was opened and searched and nine 9mm nine rounds were found in the socks. I also reported at the time that Juliet, the mother, she gave the police a statement Telling them that it was her son, Norman, popularly known as Shortman, who gave her the socks to hold when they were entering the house. Shortman, he also gave the police a caution statement, admitting to them that he was the owner for the illegal rounds. Both mother and son, they were subsequently charged for the illegal rounds. In that same operation, the police, they searched a bushy area beside the premises where Norman, his mother and other family members lived. They checked under the root of a tree and bingo. The police, they found a shopping bag containing that black CZ-75 9mm pistol with the serial number intact. It was affixed with an empty magazine. So, nine live rounds were found in the house. An empty gun was found beside the house in a tree root. Do the maths. Now, I'm not sure what's the outcome of that case, but yesterday morning, Monday, March 11, about 9.30, short man, he was riding his pink Cobra motorcycle from Ghetto Geneva towards Top Geneva in the same Grangel area. 
on reaching the intersection of Geneva and Rory Street. Hoodlums attacked. They opened gunfire at Shartman, hitting him to his head. As a result, Shartman, he ended up losing control of the bike, which crashed along the roadway. The hoodlums, they then made good their escape. The police, they were called and Shartman, he was found lying on his left side in a pool of blood with his bike close to him. He died on the spot. We are told that when the police processed this crime scene, one 9mm pen shell was recovered from the scene. It's sad to say, but the mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Popeye Newslink News and PNL Blog TV. TV. Like, subscribe, and share. With silver sin, if we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. If we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. Hey, private and mash up Jamaica. Criminals, them and mash up Jamaica. Jamaicans mash up Jamaica. Jamaica become now the land of the gun East and North 